Archaeology can be dry, labour-intensive and very thirsty work. So, after a hard day's graft, perhaps even excavating at a brewery, many archaeologists like nothing more than to go to the pub for a pint or two. I kid you not that I have even won an award for my inebriated waffly nonsense after work. However, sometimes alcohol gets a bad press, and the phenomenon of binge drinking seems to define modern Britain. Though, like so many of our vices, drinking has a well-established pedigree. Some of the oldest alcohol in the world was made around 7000 BC in Zhaihu, China. It was made by fermenting rice, honey and fruit, and was stored in jars just like these. Alcohol was widely partaken of in ancient China, and was even seen as a moral obligation. Dating back to around 5500 BC, a jar excavated from the northern Zagros Mountains in Iran revealed early alcoholic beverages were being brewed in the area. A yellowish residue which had been left upon the pot was analysed using mass spectrometry and revealed to be an early wine, something like mead. People in Egypt have a long history of brewing alcohol. By the time of the pharaohs, they had 17 varieties of beer and at least 24 types of wine. These beverages were thought to be pleasurable, nutritious and even of medicinal value, though the importance of moderation was always stressed. As early as 2700 BC, people in Babylon were big fans of beer and wine. They had a wine goddess and other deities connected to alcohol. It is little wonder, therefore, that one king famously saw writing appearing spontaneously on a wall. Between 3000 and 2000 BC, people of the Indus Valley were creating an alcoholic beverage called Sura. Ancient texts speak of the benefits and also the intoxicating power of the drink distilled from rice meal, wheat, sugarcane, grapes and other fruits. Ancient Greek symposiums simply would not have been possible without wine, but before they were masters of the grape, around 2000 BC, they were brewing honey wine or mead. For the most part, ancient Greeks were known as moderate drinkers. However, the cult of Dionysus advocated quite the opposite, intoxication as a means of becoming close to divinity. Ancient Romans imported this idea in the shape of Bacchus, the god of wine, the liberator who freed oneself from one's inhibitions through the ecstasy brought on by drinking too much. And finally, we pop across the Atlantic to Mesoamerica around AD 200, where they were fermenting an alcoholic beverage from the juice of the maguey. Pulque, as this drink is called, is just one of a selection of alcoholic beverages which survive to this day. And indeed, wine, mead, beer, parties, song, and the inevitable hangover have continued to play a role in many civilizations for thousands of years. For some, the history of civilization is the history of fermentation, and Patrick McGovern of Pennsylvania University has dedicated many years to reinvigorating and investigating ancient brews. He has even invoked alcohol as a potential answer to one of archaeology's oldest questions, and that is why start farming? When hunter-gatherers decide to farm, their diets shrink in breadth. They have to wait for food to grow, they invest time in the land around them, but also they're living far closer than ever to their own waste and sewage. They often become less healthy. He has suggested that the promise of brewing beer and alcohol may well have been the incentive to stick at it through those first few difficult years. It is possible that alcohol quite literally changed the world, laying the foundations of many modern societies. Maybe this is why archaeologists have such an affinity for alcohol. After all, what better excuse for a tipple than the foundings of civilization as we know it?